Hi, and welcome to my guide. Today we're going to be completing the quest Morning's End Part 1. The quest requirements are Big Jumpy Bird Hunting, Sheep Herder, and Roving Elves. Stand requirements are 50 Thieving and 60 Ranged. Items needed 2 Silk, at least 139 Coins, a Feather, a Leather, and 1 Magic Lock. For the recommended items, bring your best weight reducing clothing and two stamina potions should be enough. Then also a good, maybe a spec weapon to kill a Comet 11 before it can hit you back. If it hits you back, all your stats will be drained to level 20 and you won't be able to teleport anymore unless you're using jewelry. Then also between 11 and 15 empty inventory slots. Then maybe Ogre Bellows, but you can also get these during the quest. Then you will also need some pre-made Toad Crunchies or bring a teleport to the Gnome Stronghold to be able to buy that. And then also a barrel of Nafta from the Regicide quest. In my Regicide guide, I have told you to make two of them. If you do not have two of them, you will need to replace this barrel of Nafta with a Remington teleport, an antidote, two pieces of food and approximately between 5 to 10 coal. For the teleports, those are gonna be a bunch. Two teleports to Lecha, I will be getting my teleport crystal when I start the quest. Two teleports to the outpost or the Arander gate, I'm gonna be using a necklace of passage. One teleport to Ferrex Enclave, if I'm gonna get hit by the combat 11, I'm gonna be using a ring of dueling. You could also use a super restore potion to boost your stats back up. Then one teleport to Taverly from the Ferrex Enclave, I'm going to Castle Wars and I'm going to be taking the hot air balloon using one regular lock to Taverly. Then also one teleport to Rans if you do not have any Ogre Bellows. If you do have one in your bank, then you can also just teleport to the swamp south of Castle Wars. Then between two and five West Ardoin teleports and either two teleports to the fishing guild or one teleport to East Ardoin. Where to start this quest is currently I am here in Port Taris, just took the charter ship here and now the path already splits for those that already have a barrel of nafta in their bank or infantry. Because the people that already have a barrel of nafta can skip this section. For those that do not, go to Port Tyrus and you'll find three empty barrels next to the supposedly broken, destroyed, exploded tent. Pick one up and then exit north. Then go east. Continue east until you see some dense forest. Go through it, go south. Then step over the tripwire. Then continue going east. If you got hit, therefore we have brought a super antidote. Continue east through the dense forest. Continue going east to the elf tracker and just directly south of the elf tracker. Or just go southeast until we see some... Yeah, just like in the Regicide quest, use your barrel on the coal tar to get a barrel of coal tar. Next, let's return to Port Tyrus. Next to the entrance to Port Tyrus, where's the dense forest? There it is. There we'll find the quest start of the Roving Elves quest. There is also the quest start of Morning's End Part 1. Here, at the quest start and end of the Roving Elves quest, next to Port Tyrus. Alright, to start the quest, let's pass the stick strap by simply spam clicking on it until you're able to cross it. Just like in the Roving Elves quest, let's 
hop worlds until we see a campfire with the two roving elves. In my regicide guide, I have told you to start the Morning's End Part 1 quest. If you already did that, then you can also skip this part. If you did not, then just simply talk to Elanet and select option 1 twice, I am ready, and then yes to start the quest, and she will take you to Lecce to the east, and will also provide you with a teleport crystal of 4 uses. Continue the conversation with Erwin and select option 1 or 2, it doesn't really matter. Select option 1 if you want to read about the backstory, and select option 2 if you do not. Next, we will need to infiltrate the Moorish headquarters to find out why they even need to be in West Ardoin. So therefore, we will first need to get some full Moorish outfit. Make sure that your teleport crystal has at least one or two uses. And then let's make our way to the Gnome Stronghold to buy some Toad Crunchies. If you already have those in your inventory, then you can also skip this part and teleport straight to the outpost to the Arandar Gate. If you do not own any Toad Crunchies, then make your way to the Gnome Stronghold, then go to the Grand Tree, go to the first floor, to the bank, and just north of the bank, they'll find some Gnome Waiters, trade them, and look for some Toad Crunchies. pre-made Toad Crunch. Let's buy one of those. And next, let's make our way to the outpost, either by simply running south, exiting the Gnome Stronghold, or teleporting to the outpost and running northwest. Go northwest until you find some Brizzly Bears. Do not use your special attack, keep that for the combat 11. Kill one grizzly bear for its fur. Or you could go to Ardoin and buy it from the fur trader. Anyway, once you got the fur, head southwest to the Arander Gate. Once you got the fur, head west-southwest, passing the broken cart. From there, go south to the Arander Gate. Open the huge gate, which we got access to after we've completed the Regicide quest. Use Spidey, use your special attack and kill any walking combat 11. And if you did not kill it in one go, all of your stats, combat stats, got drained to level 20. Next, pick up everything that it dropped. The cloak, the boots, the top, the gloves, the trousers, the mask and the leather. Read the leather, close it. Next, once we have all this, let's make our way to the Ferox Enclave to restore our stats. I think I'm just going through the free-for-all portal. Then exit. Next, we no longer need our weapons, so to save some inventory space, let's deposit that as well as our food. We don't need to fight anything anymore. Next, let's make our way back to Lecce. So, teleport using the teleport crystal and go to the general store just north. Let's trade the general store owner, Udav. Let's buy a bucket, go south to the well, and use your bucket on the well to get a bucket of water. Then go back to the general store and from there continue west to the closing store. And let's talk to Oronwen. Select option 3. Do you mend clothes? And she will immediately fix up your trousers. Next, let's trade her and buy two red, two yellow, two blue, and two green dyes. If you're tight on inventory space, then one of each is also okay. But then you will need to hit the sheep every single time at your first attempt. 
So I'm going to be making my own barrel of nafta once again. So I'm going to be dropping that. And I'm also going to be uh, getting my ogre bellows again. So I'm just going to drop those to get two of each die. Once we have at least one of each color die, make sure that you have at least one charge left on your teleport crystal because we're not coming back here until we can claim our reward. If you ran out of charges, then you'll need to speak to Elenet, who's located just west of Lecce. Exit Lecce and follow the path going south until you find a rare tree sign and two quest starts. There, every five minutes, there will be Elenet. Talk to her with some money in your inventory and she will recharge your teleport crystal. Also, if you do not have a barrel of coal tar or a barrel of nafta in your inventory right now, then you will need to get that right now, since we're once again not coming back to Isavdar until we complete our quest. So, once we have a teleport crystal with charges, a barrel of coal tar or a barrel of nafta, let's make our way to Taverly. I'm gonna be using a hot air balloon. I do weigh a lot since the barrel of coal tar weighs like 30 kilos. But if you weigh sub 30, then you should be fine. Once you have arrived at Taverly, let's go south of the tree stump of the Grimtails quest and let's talk to Tejit, who we've also spoken to during the Eager's Edgar's Roost quest. Then maybe drop one item and steal from the laundry basket just next to him and select option 1. You've already proven yourself to be evil during the underground pass quests, so don't make stealing a bar of soap stop you now. Next, use the bar of soap with a bucket of water in your inventory on the bloody mortar top. Next, drop the soap and drop the bucket. Next, let's make our way to West Ardoin since we have our full cleaned up mortar outfit. Let's go to the northeastern corner, just like in the biohazard quest to the mortar's hideout or headquarters. Instead of wearing a nurse hat or a doctor's gown, let's equip full mourner and open the door. Oh. Equip the cloak. There we go. Then climb down a trapdoor in the northwestern corner. And then head south into the southeastern corner room and there you'll find the head mourner or assault. Let's talk to him. He will take the letter and we will want you to fix the broken paint cannon, which is designed by gnomes and we will need to torture the gnome on the rack in a room just adjacent to us. Let's open the door to go to the gnome on the rack, who refuses to fix the broken device. Let's talk to the gnome on the rack and select option 3. And he mentions something about being tickled, as well as being absolutely in love with Toad Crunchies. Once the conversation is over, let's use the feather on the gnome on the rack. And he will agree to fix the device. Let's right click on the gnome and release him to see a fade out after we have done some paperwork. Once we have the fixed device, we will need to catch some swamp toads. So, make your way to either Rants, if you do not own any ogre bellows. If you do, then you can simply teleport to Castle Wars and go to the swamp just south. I dropped my ogre bellows, so I'm making my way to Rants, to Rants' cave, and open his locked chest to find some ogre bellows, which I can use to inflate some swamp toads. There is Rance's cave. Let's go to the northwestern corner. Open or unlock the locked chest, which requires 
a bit of strength. If your strength get drained, then try again until you lock the chest, then search it and grab at least one ogre bellows. Next, let's go inflate some swamp toads, just like in the big chumpy bird hunting quest as well as recipe for disaster. So exit the cave and go a bit southwest to the swamp area. And first, with your empty ogre bellows, use a die on the ogre bellows to fill it up with dye. Once the bellows is filled with a dye, use it on any swamp toad to get a colored swamp toad. Now do this with every single color. So do this either three or seven more times, depending if you have brought two colors each or not. Once we have at least a red, green, yellow and blue color toad, let's go to the color sheep of East Ardoin. I'm gonna be using a fishing guild teleport. God damn it, that's the wrong option. Next to the fishing guild, there are the yellow sheep. So let's use a yellow toad on the fixed paint cannon device, then equip it, go to your combat options, aim and fire, and then use the arrow buttons most definitely go down always and look for some sheep and you just need to wait for a sheep to stand still once a sheep is in the center of your vision immediately click on the little red circle in the center of the arrow keys to fire your toad and it will recolor the entire herd of sheep if unfortunately the sheep moved the same tick that you fired the cannon then you will need to try once again unequip your fixed cannon and use a next toad. Uh, but since I have successfully colored the sheep ones, I'm going to the green ones next. Use your green toad on the fixed device, go a bit south, and do this one more time. Next, I'm um, continuing going south. The next one are going to be the red ones. I successfully did the green one. Wield the fixed device once again. Uh, don't move. Nice. One more to go. That is the blue one located west of the fishing guild. Yes, that's done. Successfully did it. Once we have recolored the four herds of sheep, you may release the remaining colored swamp toads. Unless you want to fire them at some people at the GE. Let's make our way back to West Ardoin. And let's go stand west of the Mordor's headquarters, just like in the biohazard quest. Let's pick up a rotten apple. And once we have this, let's head back inside and let's talk to Asilt. We have done our first favor. Oh, first, be sure to equip your full mortar and, it re and let's return to Asilt. 
We already did the first favor, which is to re-dye the sheep to let the citizens of East Ardoin know that the plague is still rampant. So let's talk to Asilt and he will ask for one more favor. After speaking to Asilt, we will need to make our way to Elena, who is at the same location as in the Biohazard quest, which is north of the East Ardoin castle. Maybe equip your weight reducing clothing. And then let's talk to Elena. Skip through the dialogue until you will get a thief in your inventory. You will be basically telling her what you have done during the Underground Path, Regicide, and Roving Elves quest to her. Once you have the thief, we will need to make our way to the enclosed Apple Orchard west of the combat training camp. Either run straight west from Elena's house. But just a little bit faster is to teleport to the outpost and run northeast. It is the first and closed area that we see, located just south of the gnome stronghold. Enter that enclosed apple tree orchard and go to the red dot on your minimap. There you'll find an empty barrel. Pick it up, then use it on the pile of rotten apples, then use this on the apple press just next to you. On the apple press, not the tap. Once you have a barrel of rotten apple mush, you will need to use this on a barrel of naphtha. For those that do not have a barrel of naphtha anymore, then bring your barrel of coal tar to Remington. I forgot my Remington teleport, so I'm quickly going to a bank and grab one. For those that still have a barrel of coal tar, go to a bank and bring a Remington teleport as well as a full inventory of coal. Then make your way to Remington to the chemist's house just like in the Regicide quest. Use your barrel of coal tar on the fractionalizing still standing outside to see this interface. Just like in the Regicide Quest, use the tar regulator, click on the right side twice to see the pressure going up. Then click on the right side of the pressure valve once when it is in the green zone. That is one out of two completed. Next, in the center, add three coal. One, two, three. And wait until the heat indicator goes down. Once it does, add one more coal. Just make sure that the heat will never go to the orange zone and stays around the green to maybe just above the green zone. Once it is totally distilled, let's close the interface to get a barrel of naphtha. And let's use this barrel of naphtha on the rotten apple barrel mush. So, once we all have a naphtha apple mix, Let's make our way back to West Ardoin and let's return to the hideout of the mourners. On our way there, let's use a sieve on the naphtha apple mix to get toxic naphtha. Let's equip full mortar, head inside and use the toxic naphtha on the cooking range. Once we have the two toxic ashes, do not teleport and just simply exit the HQ via the door and head southwest to the mayor's office of the Plague City quest. This is the building just southwest next to the HQ. And there, in the western room, we'll find the first location of the food storage. Use your toxic powder on any of the three grain sacks. Next, make our way to the southwestern general store. Either run there, or use your final West Ardoin teleport. Simply run southwest, to the most southwestern building, west of the graveyard. Outside of that general store, you'll find some more grain sacks. 
use your final toxic powder on the grain sack and let's make our way back to the motor headquarters. I should have not used... Ah, Let's talk to Asilt in the basement to let them know that we have just poisoned the citizens of Westerdoin to make them know that also in Westerdoin the plague is still rampant. Asilt will now tell us that Saren ordered the construction of a great temple underneath the Arander mountain pass. And this temple holds great power, which is key to their plan. And he says that he's pretty close to finding it. Let's talk to Esilt. And we have completed this quest. Once we have this information, let's make our way back to Aranwan in Lecce. Either teleport straight there or go through the Arander Pass. And let's talk to Arwen to complete our quest. And he will tell you that Lord Ironworth is searching for the Temple of Light, which guards a dark and ancient power. And this apparently is what Lord Ironworth wants to summon. Congratulations, you've completed Morning's End Part 1 quest. You are awarded with 2 quest points, 40,000 thieving experience and 25,000 hit point experience. Now you have the option to already start Morning's End Part 2 or not, but that is for the next video. You no longer need your two empty barrels nor your sieve anymore. Now you do need to keep your full mortar outfit, all the six pieces. If you do not have any bank space for it, then you can store it in your armor case in the POH. Subscribe, rate and comment. Okay, thanks, bye bye.